veterinary researchers are focusing on specific types of carbohydrates that are found in feeds and forages because of their association with equine disease. While we have a lot more to learn, there are good reasons for horse owners to know the amount of non-structural carbs in their feeds. One would think this is a straightforward question with a straightforward answer. But there's a lot of confusion created because terminology is often used incorrectly and there are no standardized tests for carbohydrates. Terms like sugar are open to interpretation. There are five different accepted methods to test for various forms of sugar, which may give five different numbers. Which one is the best test? Depends on which fraction is most important to that equine disease. And how do we determine which fraction is most important to that disease? That would require feeding studies where the specific carbohydrate fractions are known. Frequently, we cannot know because there's not a commercially available test for that specific fraction. Sounds like that old song, there's a hole in the bucket, dear Henry, dear Henry. Let's see if we can sort through this confusion and plug a few holes. The term non-structural carbs comes from plant scientists who name carbs by where they were found in a plant cell. As a plant scientist, I will admit to being partial to this rationale. Structural carbs are those found in the structural part of a plant cell, in other words, the cell wall. Structural carbs include cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, and pectin. These are called fiber by nutritionists. Non-structural carbs are those carbs found in the non-structural part of the plant cell, inside the cell. Sugars and fructans are stored in storage bins called vacuoles. Starch is made and stored in organs called chloroplasts. Sugar, starch, and fructan are called various things by nutritionists. In the past, they were often called non-fiber carbs to differentiate them from the fiber carbs. If you use the plant scientist definitions, the term sugar means mono and disaccharides. Fructans are polysaccharides made from a backbone chain of fructose molecules. Fructooligosaccharides have chains of less than 10 sugar units long. Fructans usually refer to those with chains of longer than 10 sugar units long. Starch is a polysaccharide based on glucose chains. Analytical labs tend to define carbohydrates by the way they're sorted out by a particular analytical method. When a lab says sugar, you need to know the analytical procedure they used. Carbs that are soluble in water are different from ethanol-soluble carbs, both called sugar. Research labs can justify expensive analytical procedures like, like HPLC and specific enzymes to quantify just fructan or specific types of sugar, like glucose and fructan separately. But that's just too expensive for the average consumer who needs to know how much sugar is in their hay. Water-soluble carbs plus starch comes closest to a plant scientist definition of non-structural carbs, which again is sugar, fructan, and starch. When nutritionists talk about carbs, they have a different focus. Non-structural carbs is a good definition for agronomists, but it's, it does not fit animal nutrition as well. Nutritionists are more concerned about the fate or effect that carbs have in an animal. Does that fraction elicit a glycemic response? Is it fermentable or hydrolyzable? The effect of non-structural carbs may be different depending on which animal is eating it. In the past, fructan was considered by nutritionists to be a fermentable fiber based on its fate in the rumen of a cow or the bowel of a human. Recent studies show that fructooligosaccharide can elicit a glycemic response in ponies. Shall we now move fructan back in with sugar? Until the effect of non-structural carbohydrates are fully investigated in horses, categorizing by these criteria may contribute to more confusion. 
When a nutritionist uses, uses the term non-structural carbs, it's often open to interpretation. They may define it differently than a plant scientist. Some say sugar plus starch. They may just use the definition that their preferred lab uses, although the question arises, do they know their lab's definition and the consequences that their lab's analytical procedure has on that definition? Old school nutrition that was based on outdated analytical, analytical procedures taught that the terms non-fiber carbs and non-structural carbs were the same. The terms are sometimes used interchangeably, although they are not the same. Direct analysis of non-structural carbs is only recently available on a commercial basis. The end consequence of this difference in interpretation is that a test for non-structural carbs can be different depending on what lab you sent the sample to or how long ago your nutritionist was educated. Theoretically, a feed company marketing a low-carb feed could find a lab whose test procedures and definition best suits their needs. Non-fiber carbs is an old method to calculate a fraction that includes sugar, starch, and fructan, among other things. It's based on an analytical method called proximate analysis that sorted out fiber, protein, fat, and ash. They essentially subtracted all of these fractions, and what was left over was non-fiber carbohydrates. Problem is that many of these fractions are bound to each other, so subtraction is not straightforward. This method is considered old-fashioned and inaccurate. Analytical chemistry has advanced, and this method should be abandoned for applications in equine nutrition. This chart was provided by Dr. Mary Beth Hall, an expert in carbohydrate analysis. This illustrates the differences between the plant scientist's term non-structural carbs and the nutritionist's term non-fiber carbs. Carbs are categorized by their location either as cell contents or cell wall. Non-structural carbs are made up of sugars, here called mono and disaccharides, starch, and oligosaccharides, which are the shorter chain fructans, sometimes called fructo-oligosaccharides and fructans, which have the longer chains. Fructo-oligosaccharides are inherent to both C3 cool season and C4 warm season grasses. As this diagram shows, non-fiber carbs, in addition to all of the fractions included in non-structural carbs, also includes organic acids, pectin, glucans, and some substances with mixed types of sugar linkage. They are clearly not the same. Pectin content can be high in feeds like alfalfa, clover, beet pulp, and soy hulls. I often wonder if the misconception that alfalfa and beet pulp are high in non-structural carbs comes from those who use the term non-fiber carbs and non-structural carbs interchangeably. Alfalfa and beet pulp average about the same water-soluble carb levels as grass hay, according to the Dairy One database. Also note, the fractions called soluble fiber and non-starch polysaccharide. These may include varying amounts of fructan depending on the chain length of the fructan being analyzed. None of these methods are precise enough to single out a specific fraction as a trigger for animal disease. They just overlap too much. This chart breaks down what is extracted with either ethanol or water. Again, non-structural carbs includes sugars, short and long chain fructans, and starch. 80% ethanol will pull out the sugars, fructo-oligosaccharides, and some of the shorter chain fructans. Hot water pulls out all those plus the longest chain fructans. Depending on the plant species being tested, Sometimes some pectic substances and glucans will also come out, falsely elevating the test results. None of these procedures is as precise as we would like. Care must be taken when comparing test results from totally different types of plants. To summarize this chart, the difference between water-soluble carbs and ethanol-soluble carbs 
are the longer chain fructans and maybe some water-soluble pectin and glucan. 